rehabilitation. I be taking trips, don't ruin as God said. I won't make a dent, Harley, but I'm still Harvey. I hope this making sense. Devil tooting his own horn. Don't come and take a snip. Wasalu Muhammad Yako, born February 16th, 1982, also known as Lupe Fiasco. You hear it a lot in music that this person or that person could have been the GOAT. They talk about potential in pretty much all facets of entertainment, which they use to box artists into physical expectations. Oh, this guy is like this kind of rapper. He's in this lane. He's this age. He's from here, he looks like this, or he sounds just like what's his name. When that's all figured out, they set a bar for you that if not reached, they quickly stop supporting you, say you fell off, and then use the now implemented social media to bash and stare others away from liking you as well. Well, this is a story that's actually true in this statement. Lupe Fiasco could have been the GOAT. Now, let's clarify. There can be more than one GOAT. In basketball, who would you say is the GOAT dunker? Who would be the GOAT ball handler, GOAT shooter, and so forth and so on? Lupe, from what he brought to the table as far as skill set, could have been GOATed in many different aspects. He's smart, he's witty, sensible, speaks clearly on and off the mic, has a teacher's charisma that's easy to listen to, and his name has to be top five rap names of all time. With all that, if Lupe wanted to be the best lyrical rapper that could take down the likes of Eminem or Kendrick Lamar and even Jay-Z, he could've. A great example of this is on the song Pressure featuring Jay-Z off his first album Food and Liquor that displays just the level Lupe was willing to rap versus the easy to understand, just rightly dumbed down verse from Jay. Don't get me wrong, Jay-Z's verse was fire. Typical Jay-Z, mastering the art of staying in just the right pockets to appeal to a broader audience. But the things Lupe was saying when you listen a few times or read his lyrics showed his ability on the big stage, but also showed you the different mindsets of a perennial all-star if this were basketball in Jay-Z, and a borderline star that's constantly snubbed from the celebrations in Lupe Fiasco. When Jay-Z says on the song, so the pen is mightier than the sword, my lord, my picture was a lineup, now I'm on the Forbes, the wordplay and references he makes to say that what he's doing now as a businessman and space he's currently in beats what he was doing as a street guy back then that only landed him in prison. He goes on to let you know that you shouldn't take that for weakness as an MC because he can still get busy and kill your whole career. And I still remain an artiste through these odds. If you force my hands, I'll be forced to draw. If the war calls for war halls, hope you got enough space on your hall's walls. It's completely understandable, at the same time shows you just enough glimpses of his ability that makes you want to peek again. Lupe, on the other hand, on this song, is like the N1 player that constantly wants to show you his new crossover. So he gets you with the move the first time, pulls it out again, only to try the move a second time gets you with it a second time, has the fans going wild, pulls it out once again, shoots a deep three for the excitement of the fans and bricks it on the side of the backboard and fans leave the gym. This was basically Lupe's career in a nutshell. Don't get me wrong, also on that song, his first verse, if you are into and one multiple crossover style, is pure gold. Sag so low you can see boxes like a boxer, that's the way that the family's pants worn, don't be sly and try put them on. Meaning or describing the life of a street guy, down to even what he looks like. But be careful, the stones in the pocket will drag you down to Davy Jones' locker. Beware if you wanna rock the knickerbockers of the nigga from the block what. Meaning that street life comes with a lot and can take your life and put you somewhere in the sea you will never be found. So if you want this life, just know. 
brilliant bars, but also delivered in a way as to show ability more than sound as exciting as dropping Andy Warhol's name, to which names in high places return favor for the shout out and open small doors people don't think about. I know this intro is long and drawn out, but hey, we're talking about Lupe here, so let me get my moves off, you feel me? Here are three reasons Lupe Fiasco's growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth. Let's get it, man. Stunt number one, different enough to want, not enough to sell. The biggest stunt in Lupe Fiasco's growth, in my opinion, was his ever dealing with Atlantic Records. While I'm not saying that the label isn't a good one, but the relationship they had with Lupe was a bad fit and costed him his entire career. How'd that happen? Lupe Fiasco is from Chicago, Illinois, born to a decorated chef mother and Black Panther father that taught karate and also played drums. He got his interesting name partially from the ending of his name, Wasalut, and took other inspiration from his good friend in high school to form his first name. Looking for a hot topic sounding last name, Fiasco made him sound just dangerous enough to put fear in MCs. Later, he'd realized that he was actually calling himself a great disaster, but kept it anyway because it looked good and he liked the way it sounded. Nas being his biggest inspiration as a child, Fiasco became serious about hip-hop around 18 and at 19 years old, Arista Records signed him through L.A. Reid after hearing his demo but dropped him soon after when Reid was fired and went to Atlantic. L.A. Reid was friends with Lupe's good friend Charles Patton, also known as Chili, who introduced Reid to Jay-Z and they became good friends. Later, Jay-Z was in talks with Atlantic to become the president over there and told his friend Chili that he wants to have Lupe with the label and so before Jay-Z actually inked the deal, Chili had Lupe sign the deal, expecting Jay-Z to follow soon after. Obviously, Jay-Z never did and signed on to be Def Jam's president, which left Lupe on a label that never really wanted him or knew how to handle his music and the relationship went south. Not initially though, because his first two albums, Food and Liquor and The Cool, are both regarded as classics and Atlantic pushing those were huge reasons why. The first problems began around Lupe's third album, Lasers, to which the artist attempted to buy his masters from the label in exchange for a more label-friendly deal, and label head at the time, Lear Cohen, basically told him to kick rocks. If you don't sign, you'll never get the promotion for your next album, which will lead to no release date. Lupe's fans became impatient, waiting on a third project from Fiasco, who had already turned in a complete record, but the label refused to put it out because it didn't have enough sellable songs in its body. And that's the biggest difference between another guy and Kanye West who I compare Lupe to in their eccentric behaviors. Kanye is different, no one will dispute that but he's also marketable through his ideas for brands and his knowingness of when to pull back and when to explode in rants that have his name everywhere, which allow him to sell product. Lupe is also different, but he doesn't have that distribution gift like Wes and always seems to be in rant mode, not wanting to bend for the establishment. This makes him easy to place on the back burner and Atlantic try to, until fans protest the release of lasers outside of Atlantic's office to which is brilliant marketing, which I still don't put it past the label for creating this themselves in order to sell his project. Do I believe that amount of disruption would be cause for a Lupe project? No, I don't. I think initially it was a marketing ploy that caught on with the real sheep of society and grew into something organic. Plot twist, upon release, the fans hated the album. Just like the deep three he pulled earlier and they didn't support it equal to the hype it had nor the pop direction. Another plot twist, Lupe also hated the album. On his final album for the label, there would once again be disagreements and the label held his project again until being threatened online and giving it a release date. 
which to me is once again great marketing to build hype but not great for Lupe's career because there would always be this hype but the records wouldn't come out like expected while fans also criticize the works for being too lyrically heavy or like lasers too pop sounding. This frustrated fans who outside of his die hard view left Lupe's side and his numbers began to constantly decline. Stunt number two, who is Lupe Fiasco? One of the things that personally turned me away from Lupe's music was the constant back and forth with what I got from his projects versus my expectations. Everything after the cool confuses me about Lupe Fiasco's music. Like is he a rap god? Is he a pop star? Is he pro black? Is he too much of a fanboy to other cultures? Is he in the trap? A Chirac dread headed demon? I can't figure it out. At one point he had directions in his first two albums. The lyricist that specialized in wordplay and saying something you'll remember forever on every song. And they say oil and water don't mix now they all down at the beach washing off the fish. Illuminating the hypocrisy of humans who didn't think he was nice but when he brought Jay Z around everyone is bought into the fish he's selling and washing it down like prized possession. Or Dumb It Down, a track that explains how the industry, along with fans at times, wants him not to be so lyrical and rap in a way they could understand him easier. A brilliant concept that leads you to believe through its title and beat that it might be a dumbed down Lupe, but it's exactly the opposite. Maybe the biggest lyrical flex of his career is shown on this track. This was Lupe's lane to me finding interesting and creative ways to get his message across while also sounding cool to bop to. At some point down the line he straddles between dumbing it down and jumping over the lyrical gate and I think that hurt him not having a consistent direction. Songs like Jump where he raps on a trap, trendy, popular sounding instrumental but predictably tries to be too lyrical on it as to serve both audiences. The song fails miserably in my opinion because I simply don't know what to do. Should I bob to the beat or sit still and focus so I can catch what he's saying? At the end, if you didn't cut it off midway through verse 1, you leave not knowing what to feel and definitely won't give it a second listen. Go listen to City of the Year featuring Rondo and tell me Lupe has any idea what direction he wants to head. Because on that track, I saw four different exits. Stunt number three, the Lupe Perception. Hands gathering ransoms and maps man's laps in a hand lathered in absinthe. Got a talent traffic and ramblings and handing out amazing handmade maps of the labyrinth. Another stunt in Lupe's growth is the perception that was created about him as too difficult to understand. Lupe has been in the music industry officially since 2006 and saw many changes to the hip hop game as far as what the fans gravitated to. One change that came along is the more melodic sound with super dumbed down repetitive bars but makes you move and have a good time or stand there and look cool. Everything after his first two projects were confusing in his intentions and also not worth it for some to sit there and pay attention to each bar he says. Nowadays everyone wants the more singy street rapper that drills and kills all day. They want the turn up, the club banger or whatever's popular on YouTube and TikTok and rap charts. The way Lupe is viewed in 2021, I don't think the masses are coming back to his side after giving him chance after chance to give them what they want. Instead, he delivers something overly cooked in lyrical seasoning served in the popular plastic container. All in all, Lupe has had a solid career. No, he didn't become a goat at any one thing and his growth took some hits I'm sure he'd redo if he could. He still has the respect as an MC and at the end of the day he still has two classics under his belt. That's a lot more than a lot of rappers can say. But for these reasons his growth in music was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth and I'm out.